I'm sort of pretty lucky to be able to travel. Like at home, I have a fantastic staff. Um, and who's really running my show back there and the 50 acres at home we've got with uh, a lot of gallopers spelling and uh, also running the barn and the bookwork too. So her and um, Alicia and Danny, Ayumi and Tyler, there's a great big team back at home and their communication is super so we're on the phone all the time and um, in contact and you know it's just really good to know that everything at home is running smoothly while I'm, while I'm away. Yeah so there's a lot of planning and bring, bringing horses down south. Um, your mind never stops ticking, organising, you know, transport, your feed and all your gear and bits and pieces um, at, at the South Island end as well as keeping an, um, everything up to date at the North Island uh, end as well. So there's a fair bit of uh, planning and, and work involved in making it happen. Yeah, while travelling I sort of like to try and get home um, as much as I can, but this trip's by only two weeks. Um, I did look at flying home for the race uh, Thursday night, but it probably just wasn't uh, going to work with the flight. Yeah, so this time I've just stayed down. Probably it's something trainers have to do at the moment with the way the fields are um, up north, but like for your better class horses, um, over, over cup week it's probably the place to be. Um, you're guaranteed to run every week and um, it's something that we're going to have to, yeah, probably look into doing again this year when we um, set the team to head back down. Kango coming after Cranbourne, then AG's White Sox, Cranbourne lifting, Kango's coming, it's the North Islander! Kango nailed Cranbourne and a David Butcher special! Yeah, it was great to um, pull off that with Kango last week. Um, it was obviously a hit and run mission and uh, they don't generally work out, but it, uh, yeah, we had a bit of a lucky bird on our shoulder maybe last week and it did, so uh, fantastic drive from David and um, you know, take nothing away from the second horse, he was super too. But um, just so brilliant for the um, Bruce Brody who owns Kango. Um, you know, he's in his 80s at home in Cambridge and his daughters get a lot of pleasure out of watching him race and you know, he, um, he just, you know, it's good that he wants to keep him here in New Zealand and race him. He's had a lot of opportunity to sell him and uh, he's opted to stay here and, and keep him here, which is really good. And he just gets such a thrill out of it. And, um, you know, he told me he's got six daughters and he said, this guy's my son. So, um, you know, fantastic and such a good owner. Like he's happy if we win, um, but he's happy if we run last too. You know, he's, he's always smiling and that makes my job easy too. So, yeah, couldn't be more grateful. Rough and ready, rough and ready, bad medicine on the inside, rough and ready, bad medicine, rough and ready would not be denied. It's nice to be on top of the leaderboard with uh, rough and ready, he, um, he's done a super job, you know, I think he's won 11 races and, um, you know, David Butcher and him seem to really click, so uh, he's the right man to have in the bike for fourth um, Saturday night. Um, it's going to be a tricky draw out at 17, but uh, I'm sure he'll uh, work that one out. Bad medicine, Glen Thorne kicking back, stable Quinella coming up, bad medicine. He's, uh, he's come a hell of a long way this time in bad medicine. Um, you know, he, yeah, as I say, he's only won the three races, but he's, he's just super consistent. He, he's just like a little F-Boss card. He doesn't know how to go a bad race. And um, I'm hoping that, you know, the two mile will be okay for him. He's drawn probably pretty well at one, so you know, he won't have to cover too, too much extra ground. Um, but yeah, like he's, he's just got such a great attitude. He's very laid back. Um, nothing phases him, he, you know, and it's his first trip away and he's just thrived on it. So, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing what he can do. Probably like to work them um, together when they're, oh, especially when they're down here. Um, Bad Medicine tends to be a very lazy track worker, so we wouldn't get too much out of him if he was out there by himself. And um, Rough and Ready doesn't do a lot of work with, his, without the hobbles on, with the hobbles on, sorry, so he, um, he makes for a good GP and, and works works well together with um, the other guy. Generally, uh, he doesn't do any work in his hobbles at all, rough and ready. He's just taken a bit of a shine to doing a bit of trotting. Doesn't always trot, but um, when he does, he, he trots quite nice. So uh, hence why he had the boots on. He, he trotted for the first part of his work this morning and then, then rolled into a gallop. But um, yeah, maybe uh, in another six or eight months, we might see him in a maiden trot. I think the theory of them both is very good. It would have just been nice if the Red Eye race was possibly the week after or a week before, so he could have got two runs since he was eligible for both. Um, and then, yeah, sort of, you know, he's starting in the in the big go, which is great for his owners and a big group of syndicate that are, that are in him. But uh, he possibly might have been better in the in the other race um, with the 30k. But look, you know, he's he's well, and we'll just have to take it as it is. Because these uh, middle grade horses. They, um, they deserve a chance to race for this sort of money and it's great that, um, that they've got that opportunity, you know, um, a lot of them could have been sold and be offshore by now, so it's good that they can stay here in New Zealand and have the chance to race for some 
decent money, you know, for their owners and, and everyone involved. Bad Medicine generally races in my uh, colours, but he's owned also by the Green Machine Syndicate who are based down here, so they rang and asked if while he's in the South Island could he possibly race in their colours, and I was more than happy to um, accommodate that. So this week we'll have um, Robert Simon and his wife from, from Deep South, they'll be up to uh, watch can um, Rough and Ready in the final. And then um, Bad Medicine's got a massive group of syndicate people and I know uh, I've had a lot of emails from a few of them that, are, that have booked their tickets and made the trip uh, down which is great and of course the Green Machine Syndicate which is already based down here I'm sure some of them will be on track too so it's fantastic and it's good that people can be back at the races now too and um, be in the barn and see their horse and, and uh, enjoy the, the real race, you know, the racing as it is.